fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Holy through the untiring efforts of the Lone Ranger, a notorious outlaw went to jail to serve a lifetime sentence. But Reed Martin was smart as well as ruthless. He was in the territorial prison for only slightly more than one year when he effected a daring escape. Jail break! Prisoner's broken free! Jail break! What happened? What are you firing at? Why the alarm? Warden, it's a jail break. Reed Martin got over the wall. Get all the available men together. Bring the bloodhounds. We must find Breed Martin before he finds the man who captured him. All the time he's been here, Warden, he's been bound to get revenge on that masked man. Breed Martin won't rest until he kills the Lone Ranger. During the weeks that followed, there was an extensive manhunt that spread over several states. But the forces of the law were pitifully small to cover the vast territory west of St. Joe. And Martin made good his escape. No one suspected that the half-breed had taken refuge in the position of a guide for a wagon train. Jim Harkness was the leader of the wagon train. His wife was at his side in the first of the prairie schooners. Oh, 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 easy, boy. Hey, you, Mr. Harkness. The guide is calling to you, Jim. Yeah, what's on your mind, Martin? I'll climb up in the seat beside you and let my horse travel alongside. Anything wrong? Well, yes and no. There's been resentment brewing ever since you hired me as your guide. Resentment? Walt Davis has his own ideas about the right trail. They're different from mine. Walt well, Davis is a stubborn young man. He insists we should cut north instead of bearing towards Santa Fe. 
been talking to a lot of the men. Oh, he has, huh? Oh, well, he's just young and impetuous. He's using your age against you, Harkness. I've heard plenty of talk in the camp. I hate to think Walt would turn against me. Well, he's turning against you, all right. He's telling everyone there's a better future in the North for the men with nerve and courage to tackle the trail. Yeah, Walt spoke of turning north some time ago. When I ruled against it, I thought he'd just let it drop. Well, he hasn't let it drop, not by a jugful. He's working behind your back. And I thought you should know it. Yeah, thanks, Martin. Thanks for telling me. With the seeds of dissension firmly sown in the leader's mind... Brief Martin returned to his horse and dropped back in the train until he rode alongside a much younger man, Walt Davis. I like you, Davis. I hate to see you get a dirty deal. What do you mean, Martin? You said some mighty nice things about Jim Hawkins. Sure. Fine man. He acts like a good friend of yours. He is a good friend. He's saying you told lies about him. He thinks you've been turning some of the men against him. Well, that's not true. Well, I ain't saying it's true, Walt. I'm only saying it's what Harkness is spreading around. I know a lot of men who'd prefer to take the northern route. But they're willing to go along with the majority. I haven't turned anyone against Jim Harkness. Well, I reckon Harkness is accusing you because he's jealous. Jealous? Yeah. He's sensitive about his age. Jealous because you're younger. He figures you'll outdo him when the wagons reach a place where you folks can settle. He figures you're aiming to be the head man in the settlement. Why, that's not true. I figure that's, uh, that's why he's saying all the ugly things about you. Ugly things? What do you mean? Well, you know how things have been disappearing from the different wagons during the past few nights. What about Of course, Harkness didn't come right out and accuse you of being a thief. Did he hint that I was a thief? Well, Why, that two-faced old toad. As I see it, he hopes to set the men against you. That is, as many of them as he can. I see. I'm sure sorry that I had to be the one to tell you. That's all right, Martin. Thanks. Yeah. Now I reckon I better ride ahead of the wagons and look behind that hill. Just about time to watch for a camping place for the night. Yeah, I better do that. Well... I'll let you know if I hear any more. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Martin. After escaping from the prison and before joining the wagon train as a guide, Freed Martin had made contact with a band of renegade Indians whose leader was known as Brown Fox. The renegades had maintained a position not far from the wagon train. And Martin rode to meet them after crossing a small hill. Who? Who? Who are Who are Hey, Brown Fox. Mm. How? You're doing fine at keeping abreast of the wagon train and out of sight of the men. You make big promise. Plenty cash. Plenty gun and blanket. Yeah. You get all I promised you, Brown Fox. Wagon train... Plenty big. Too many men for fight. You won't have to fight the whole train. I'm arranging for a split up. Huh? What do you mean? I'm stirring up trouble between the leader and another gent. Inside of two days, I'll have that wagon train divided. Half will head north. The other half will shove on toward Santa Fe. Then it'll be easy to attack. Oh, that's good. Mm. You keep moving ahead on the Santa Fe Trail, but keep out of sight. When we attack. I'll let you know. Now get back to the wagons and keep things stirred up so as Harkness and Davis will reach a showdown. Get a bit. Come on. When the wagons were halted, each small group made its own arrangements for the night. Reed Martin went to Harkness, then to Davis, and repeated the performance, adding fuel to the fires of dissension he had started. Jim and Mary Harkness, older than most of the others, made their camp a simple one. Now, as soon as the coffee is boiled, we can start eating. I don't 
don't feel much like eating, Mary. Oh, you feel better for a solid meal, Jim. Don't let Walt Davis bother you. Remember, he's young and impetuous. He's working behind my back, and I won't stand for that. Mary, it's the same as Newton. Man. Nonsense. This wagon train is like an army. We've got to have discipli- discipline. Where are you going, sir? Uh... Walt Davis is standing alone there. I want a few words with him. Please, Jim, now don't make trouble. He's the one that's making the trouble. I'm going to put a stop to it. Oh, please, Jim. Please wait till after you're beaten. Please, now, come back here, Jim. Davis? Davis, I want to talk to you. Oh, you do, huh? Well, start talking. I've been hearing a few things. Well, you're not the only one. I just want you to know you're not needed in this outfit. Oh. So now you're inviting me to pull stakes, is that it? Seems to me you don't need an invitation. Well, I don't. I wondered how soon you'd get around to speaking your piece to my face instead of behind my back. I don't say things behind any man's back. Oh, you don't, No, huh? I don't. Hey, Jeff, don't start a row here in the camp. I'm not starting any row. This old goat doesn't want me in his outfit. He can go his way and I'll go mine. I don't want any troublemakers. I said that at the start and I say it now. Now, ah, Jim, maybe you're mistaken about the thievery. The thievery? Yeah, what's the trouble, Jim? Martin, you keep out of this. Davis, is it true that you've got half of the outfit ready to cut loose with you? And what if it is? So that's what you were doing when you rode from one wagon to the other during the last couple of hours. Lining up men to desert the train. Well, what if I was? Plenty of men would rather take the North Trail. Then they can take it. Now, hold on, Harkness. You run up against the Indians or something, you might need the younger men. We'll get along without them. Yeah, you bet you will. Of course, I'm just a guide. But it seems to me that maybe if you apologize to each Why, other... Why, me apologize? For what? You may have said things without thinking. I've said nothing I don't mean. That goes double for me. I'll be glad to be rid of you. So the others who are going north with me. Trouble. I won't have any trouble. If Davis wants to leave us, he can do it. So can anyone else. We don't need him. You might regret this, Parker. I won't regret a thing. Neither will I. Hey, how many of you aim to go with Davis? I'm going with him. Wait, Mark, this is none of your affair. Well, I gotta know, Harkness. Jim, it won't do to split up. They're already split up, Mrs. Harkness. You couldn't hire me to stay with this outfit. I'm going north. Me too. And me too. All right, we'll settle this right now. We'll divide the wagon train. Those who want to can follow me on the Santa Fe Trail. Those who want to head north can follow Davis. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Approximately half of the wagon owners, mostly the younger men who were more adventurous, decided to follow Walt Davis. And the next morning, two lines of wagons instead of one rolled out of the camp and separated. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Toto were riding slowly across the plains. Neither man had the slightest suspicion that Breed Martin was in the vicinity. They didn't know that Breed had escaped from prison. They hadn't even thought of the outlaw for over a year. When the Lone Ranger reached the point where the wagon trail divided, he signaled a halt. Oh, oh, Hello. Look at those tracks. Ah. That wagon train we hear about. Must be the same one. Why trail divide? The split trail generally means a disagreement. There are Indians west of here. Yes, I know there are. Them plenty bad Indians. Them see small wagon train, maybe make attack. The Overland Trail is hard on the nerves of even strong men. The pioneers could realize that their security often lies in sticking together as one strong unit... Instead of splitting up because their nerves are raw and their tempers on edge. Pioneers help West to grow. That's why we must do all we can to help the pioneers. Otto, those Indians we saw early this morning are planning to attack the wagon train. I want to know it. Maybe me ride back. Talk to Indians. We'll both go, Toto. Plenty dangerous for you, Kimasabi. Indians see white man with good horse, good gun. Maybe steal him. They might rob a white man, but I doubt if they'll move against another Indian. Open the saddlebags and get out that buckskin clothing while I darken my complexion. You dress like Indian? Yes. We'll ride into the camp as a couple of renegade Indians and see what we can learn. The 
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. train divided. Reed Martin, who had been traveling with Jim Harkness, rode far ahead to meet Brown Fox. Who? Who there? Who? Why are you here now? I know you didn't expect me until later, but you see, Brown Fox, things worked out faster than I figured. What happened? I told you I'd started hard feelings between two men in the wagon train. Uh? Well, the argument came to a showdown last night. The wagon train was split up this morning. Half the outfit's traveling this way, the other half's heading north. We've got more than enough men here to attack the Harkness outfit. When we make attack. Well, the wagons can't follow the trail I used over the mountains. They'll have to wind through the valleys. It'll be some time before they get close enough to attack. I've got a place for that attack all picked out. Get your horse and come with me. I'll show it to you. Other Indian go? No, tell them to stay here and get their firearms ready. Uh, I need the order! We get horse. We go. While the Lone Ranger worked on his disguise, Toto stripped away all but the bare essentials of Silver's ornamented trappings and daubed the remaining gear and the silky white coat of the horse with mud. The Lone Ranger darkened his face with steam and put on a headband and fringed buckskin clothing similar to that worn by Toto. He looked like another Indian as he rode beside his friend through the hills to the camp of the renegades. As the two approached, they saw the Indians busily cleaning firearms and sharpening their knives. Several of the Indians rose to meet the newcomers. Stay up, stay up. Oh, oh. How? Who you? Need to want a... Want a water meat. Need to want a... Oh. Kato did the talking in the Indian tongue, explaining that he and his friend had traveled far and sought food. Uh, this way. Him give food. Good. These Indians are getting ready for something, Kato. We'll try to find out what it is. It was a simple matter to learn the plans. The Indians explained that they would soon have newer guns and rifles, plenty of ammunition, and money as well as blankets and jewelry and other things that would be divided after the attack on the wagon train. Meanwhile, Breed Martin and the Indian leader, Brown Fox, were returning to the camp. Plans for the attack had been completed as they rounded a big rock and saw the other Indians 50 yards away. Look there. Hey, what is it, Brown Fox? Two horses. Just a minute. Hold it. Hold, hold there. Hold it. Hold it. Why you stop? I want to look at those two newcomers. One of them looks like the Indian partner, the mask man I've been hoping to get. Here he is. Uh, it's Toto. You know other men? Yes, I do. I bet all I've got or ever will have that the man standing beside that white horse is no Indian. Uh, he'd look this way. He and Toto are hitting the saddle. They're coming this way. Get your gun ready, Brown Fox. Let me do the talking. Uh, is where I keep a promise I made to myself. I'm going to get the Lone Ranger. There we are, Brady and Phil. Oh, As he drew rain, the Lone Ranger recognized Breed Martin. It was a stunning surprise to see the outlaw out of jail. It was hard to keep his face impassive. You're holding guns on both of you. Hold your hands at shoulder level. I see through that disguise. I know who you are just as well as you know who I am. Out of jail, huh, Breed? Yeah, out of jail. Downright grateful to you for coming here so I can square accounts. You know what I'm going to do. 
You're going to try to kill me. Not the way you think. You're going to die slow, and I'm going to watch. First, you'll have to disarm me. <laughs> you want me to come close, and then you'll make a fast move and try to grab me or something, huh? Well, I'm taking no chances. Brown Fox, call your men. Tell them to come here and toss ropes on these two. Drag them to the ground and take their guns. After that, I'll give the orders. He got the killing! What are you knuckle? The Lone Ranger knew that there was scant hope of escape while Greve Martin and Brown Fox, astride their horses, held guns level less than six feet away. But he knew that all hope would be gone when the rest of the Indians came up. He had to gamble desperately. He glanced significantly at Toto and then rammed his heel against the side of his great horse, Silver. The powerful white stallion reacted as if he were on spring. Silver lunged against Greg Martin's horse. The outlaw fired, but he was off balance. The masked man's upraised hand came down with a stiff-fingered chopping blow to the side of Martin's neck. His other hand shot like a battering ram to the chin. All right, take it! Brown Fox turned toward the action for a split second, but gave Toto time to charge. Toto grabbed Brown Fox's gun and used it as a club on the head of the renegade leader. Reed Martin, stunned, fell from the saddle. Come on, Toto! Get him up! Come on, Silver! The oncoming followers of Brown Fox halted in their tracks and brought up their guns to fire a volley. But they were too late. The masked man and Tonto had rounded a massive boulder. They were out of sight and dashing into the sheltering hills. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were well away when Breed Martin regained consciousness and learned from Brown Fox what had happened. You mean to say those two escaped? Ah, uh, that's right. Him know we plan attack for sunset. Yeah, that'll give him time to go to Fort Benton and get soldiers. We've got to work fast. We'll start to that wagon train right away. When the soldiers get there, they'll find nothing but some burned-up wagons and dead pioneers. Jim Harkness, driving the leading wagon, has been silent for a long time. He looked back, then muttered, I guess they've gone for good. War gave it to me, Eddie. Yep. You didn't give War the chance to deny any of the charges, Jim. Wait, what's that? Jim, it, it sounded like an Indian. There's more of them. Oh, 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 that. Jim, Indians ahead. Oh, the warfare. How far away? They'll be here in a few minutes. Coming this way? Yes, and riding hard. Pass the word to pull the wagons into a circle. Get up there. Get around there. Yes, David. Indians. Warm a circle. Get this to fight. Hurry up. Jim, there they come. Get around there. Come on, Get there, man. Get the rifles out there. Yes. Come around here now. Ho, ho. The Lone Ranger hadn't even considered riding to Fort Benton for aid. He remembered that the wagon train had split. He paused only to remove his Indian disguise, then rode with Toto toward the north. Come on, Silver! Faster, big fella! Several men on horses rode alongside the wagons led by Walt Davis. Walt and a man named Loomis rode in the first wagon of the more venturesome train. When they heard a ringing cry from a hill on the left, they looked and saw two horsemen. Hey, Loomis, huh? Look at those horses coming down the hill. Great job. You ever see any of them travel past me? Oh, sir, never know my born day. Hey, hey, take a look at the first rider. Hey, what about him? I... Hey, Walt, he's mad. That's what I thought. The other one's an Indian. They're coming at us like they mean business. Better get your gun where you can reach your fence. Uh, two men wouldn't attack a whole wagon train. I don't know about that. A man who can ride like that might tackle anything. Oh, they're riding right up to us. Oh, 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 those wagons. Oh, 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 your friends are being attacked by Indians. They need you. Don't tell them they wanted to be rid of us. The guide you had is working with the Indians. What guy? Martin. Led your friend into a massacre. Right. Who are you? What's the difference? For all you know, I might be an outlaw. That doesn't change things. All your friends are in danger. Without you, they'll never see sunset. Hey, Josh, Walt, what we... say about Martin? Martin's working with Indians. They're attacking your friends. What? Hey, Walt, Martin's the one that got me down on Harkness. Me too. He wanted to split your train. Great day, come to think of it, Martin's the one who turned me against Harkness. If he talked to Harkness like he talked to me, what... 
Loomis, you bring the wagon. I'm riding a horse. Right. Hey, boys. Easy, boys. We're cutting south. Easy, Ready, boys. Right. All right. Swing your horses south and give them the whip. Follow me. Right. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. We're out number two heavily. Why they dared attack this dirty red kid? If we hadn't split up, they wouldn't have tackled us. There, I got one of them. At least we'll go down and fight. Jim, look over there. There's that guy. Mark, why that ornery double caution. Oh, they got you. That's not bad. I'll we'll manage to keep going for time. Jim, you load your own rifle from now on. I'm doing some shooting on my own. Good, Mary. There's one. Uh, they're riding off a close, Jim. We can't hold up much longer. They'll know they've been in a fight. Uh, Jim, Jim, look over there. Horsemen coming over the hill. Fire as they come there. They're firing at the Indians. Oh, thank goodness. Hang on, boys. Help is coming. Jim, Jim, it's our boys. There's Wolf, Kit, and Sam, and Blue. Wolf. Look at them riding behind that man on the white horse. Reinforcements dashed at the Indians with guns blazing. The Lone Ranger singled out Reed Martin and closed in for the showdown. I want you, Martin, and I'll watch you. Hit! You'll have to go back to jail. The tide of battle quickly changed. By the time the wagons of Walt Davis and Strain arrived at the scene, the fight was over. Martin was captured. Brown Fox and several of his men were killed. The others had fled into the hills. <laughs> Jim, I tied Breed Martin and put him in your wagon. I'll turn him over to the law in the next town, as I promised. I, uh, I can never thank you, mister. Walt told me you led him here. I didn't do it for thanks, Jim. I wanted to see Breed Martin back in jail. And I wanted you men to live and start a new town in the West. Jim, the boys are lining up their wagons. I, I told him to put them back in your life. I hope you'll let us travel with you, Jim. Oh, go ahead, Walt. I'm glad to hear that. I wanted a chance to talk to you. Now that we know our guide was a crook scheming to ambush you. And you know all about it. Yes, the masked man told me. He... Hey, where is that masked man? He was here a minute ago. He's over there, Jim, with the Indian. Hey, mister! We meet again, Jim. When you're home, the bills will visit you. Jim, the West is made up of men like him. We can all be proud to live here. There aren't many men like him, Mary. He's the Lone Ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. 
Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.